So we're here getting ready to board on the plane. You can see the plane behind me. Uh, so we're gonna get ready to board. It's gonna be about a 30 to 35 minute flight. And we're gonna see all the figures at the Nazca lines. So let's go ahead and see. Greetings everyone. I'm the Latin American Vegan and welcome to my channel. Join me as I travel to towns, cities, and countries in search of great vegan food and fantastic new locations. Good morning, everyone. It's Louis, aka the Latin America Vegan. We're here in Nazca, Peru, getting ready to fly over the Nazca lines. You heard me right, fly over. We're gonna be taking a small little plane that fits about six to eight people, and we're gonna be able to see all the Nazca lines from above on a plane. So let's go see how exciting this is. We're here at the airport, at the Nuska uh, airport. It's a very small airport, really tiny. We're gonna get ready to go uh, and board about 10 minutes on the flight so we can go ahead and go see the Nazca lines. Stay tuned. <coughs> so this is what the inside of the Nazca airport here in Peru looks like. Very tiny, very small. Um, but basically it's just used, what I believe, for doing, uh, taking tourists up to see the lines. <laughs> really small airport there is security you have to go through passport uh, control and you also have to go through a screening process to make sure that you're not bringing anything you're not supposed to so we're like at the next step I think the next thing we're gonna do now is just get on board and then we'll have something uh, nice of you so we're here getting ready to board on the plane you can see the plane behind me uh, so we're gonna get ready to board it's gonna be about a 30 to 35 minute flight and we're gonna see all the figures at the Alaska lines so let's go ahead and see so oh, we're getting ready to take off now. Uh oh, exciting and nervous at the same time. This will be our flight pattern for the day. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see everything. Let's go. There goes the whale. Look at that. Here comes the monkey. There it goes, you see it? There it goes. Here comes the dog. Wait for it, it's in the mid to upper left. There you go, right there in the middle. There it goes, there goes the dog. Here comes a wonderful looking hummingbird. There you go. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Beautiful hummingbird. Wow. That looks fabulous. And to think they did this over 2,000 years ago. Magnificent. This next piece of work is a condor, which is the biggest flying bird in the Western Hemisphere. And you can tell by how big they actually made this. Wonderful looking. Amazing. Now we're about to see the parrot. You see it right there in the middle upper part of your screen. Now we're getting ready to move up on three shapes right now. You see the hands right there and then the tree on the left of it. And right immediately to the left of the tree, you can see the tail of a lizard, which is not even on the map because the road goes across it. But you see the lizard there. You can see the lizard coming up right there on the left hand side. The plane is going to pull around hopefully here. So you can get a better shot. There it goes. That's the lizard. Great. So we just landed. I got a little motion sickness while I was up there trying to record and trying to, you know, look at the lines, but I made it. So. So we just finished our flight. Uh, I got a little sick actually, motion sickness, which I was really not expecting. But it was because I was trying to film and look at the, the lines uh, myself with my own eyes and also trying to get the lines with the uh, you know, camera, trying to shoot for you guys to be able to see. But I mean, it was not a big deal. 
you know, um, I got over it pretty quickly, um, so I'm doing good. We're going to get ready to go to do some more expedition here in Nazca, and then we're off to some other parts of Peru. So I'm walking around, and I see this artwork here of the lines in Nazca. So why don't you guys just have a good look at that. It's pretty nice, actually. Let me move back here a little bit. So you get a nice view of the Nazca paintings here, simulating the Nazca lines here. Pretty nice. Look at the mountains over here. How beautiful those mountains look. It's amazing, it's like, it's like a painting. It's beautiful. Wow, look at these mountains. It's beautiful. It's amazing stuff here. So we're looking at the aqueducts here. They were able to bring the waters from the high mountains all the way down to the valleys and, the, and they were able to keep the water from evaporating. And they used to have uh, every 10 meters, they have areas where they can actually go down into the aqueducts and actually clean them as well. So it's fantastic. They were marvels at engineering. I mean, something that you wouldn't have imagined back uh, 100 BC all the way to 800 AD. Um, this was at a time where aqueducts were really not heard of at the time. So right behind me, you can see the aqueducts right here. See this right here, right behind me? All that? All that, you can see that? That's the aqueducts right there. So we're going to go ahead and see some more of this. Stay tuned. This is one of the, the waterways I was, asked, I was telling you previously that they used to actually go down and clean the aqueducts. And it was spiral shape. So this is one of them. It's called it here in the south coast, but in the north it's called it Algarrobo. No? You know, so this is our tour guide. Uh. This is our tour guide educating us on here on the uh, aqueducts. Look how they did the, the work using the stones. They piling the stones on top of stones. So right behind me you see some more of the spiral form chimneys that they use to actually go down and clean the aqueducts. And do they use it for other things like I said previously also help to prevent it from evaporating and stuff. So you see right here, right behind me. Very smart, intelligent people, wow, amazing. I'm so happy I'm here. We're in uh, Nazca, Peru. This is just the beginning. We have some more. Stay tuned. We're getting ready to walk Al Telal. You see behind me, people walking up there. So we're gonna walk all the way up the mountain and take a look from, the, from on top of the mountain. Beautiful sights to see. Let's go ahead and go. My name is Giancarlo. Giancarlo. This is Giancarlo. This is our tour guide here in Nazca. He's teaching us about this place. Fantastic guy. Fantastic place. Come and visit him next time you're here. Yes. Come on to Nazca to visit. To see the Nazca lions. Oh. <laughs> So if you look right here, you'll see the thread. Then if you look to the left, from north to south, you'll see right there, that's the needle. So we're here at the ancient ruins in Nazca, Peru. It's called the Paradones, and we're gonna go ahead and check it out. You can see if I turn around this way, you can see behind me, you can see the ruins, some ruins right there. So we're gonna go be visiting that soon, and uh, it's supposed to be a marvelous sight. Um, so I'm so happy to be here. Los Paradones was the administrative headquarters for the Incas in this region. So we're trekking up the mountain uh, so we can see the view of this magnificent place from above. Um, it's just phenomenal. Um, one thing is it's very hot today, unexpected, uh, but you better be ready for some serious trekking when you come here. The square. This square was used to make the trade, the market. Trade. So it's the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Marketplace. The trade between the coast and the Andes. Oh, okay. When the Incas come to this area, also it was used to celebrate, not to do the fest, the ceremonies <laughs> of God. 
so this is some of the ruins here as you can see just like the spiral aqueducts uh, uh, entrance to the aqueducts these uh, rocks were positioned strategically so that they can resist uh, earthquakes it's amazing look at these ruins we're making making our way up to the top or to higher lands so we can get a better look from another different angle also to see some other items as well so we're gonna go check out some textiles oh look at the size of this cactus oh my goodness that is remarkable this gentleman's name is Toby and he's been designing or making or manufacturing replicas of the Nazca pottery since he was 10 years old and he's currently 66 years old amazing man these items are some of Toby's work of art beautiful El, eh, somos una asociación de 10 familias, de estas 10 familias, 7 se dedican a tejidos y 3 a la plata, de manera artesanal. Les voy a explicar. Este de acá es plata natural, en su estado natural. De estos se va a refinar hasta obtener este de acá, que es plata pura o plata piña se lo conoce, así puro puro no se puede trabajar porque la plata es flexible, maleable entonces tenemos que hacer una aleación y para este caso vamos a usar cobre ¿cuánto de cobre? 5% vamos a agregar lo vamos a fundir y vamos a obtener hilos de plata 950 o láminas de plata 950 ¿qué quiere decir 950? que tiene 95% de pureza luego de esta vamos a formar figuras como esta this is what the phases look like when making jewelry from silver, from its purest form down to the end when they add color from natural elements. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Nazca lines and the sights I brought to you today. I'll see you soon. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. If you haven't hit the bell icon, please do so so that you're notified when I have new content online. This is Lewis, aka the Latin American Vegan. Thanks for watching. Adios. Cuídate.